Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Come on, help us sing. Let the glory. Let the glory of the Lord. Let it rise. Rise among us. Let the glory. church we want to give honor to God today this morning who is the head of our life we give honor to our own pastor pastor Reverend Donald L Trent senior to mrs. Trent to all the associate ministers their wives to my husband to the deacons and to the trustees and to all our ushers and to all of those assembled this morning. You all look so beautiful. Give yourselves a hand. Amen. God is good, and it is so great just to know that he has allowed us to be in the house of the Lord. One more time. It, it's just a blessing that we woke up, amen? Because somebody didn't open up their eyes on this side of glory, amen? And it's just a blessing. And we come to give God praise. Nobody's going to have to force you because if you woke up and if you were able to put your stockings on one leg at a time, if you were able to put your, your leg in one pants leg at a time, that is something to give God praise for. Amen? Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, and serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endure to all generations. Let us all stand as we have our opening hymn by our senior choir. I'll take nothing for my journey.
morning. Yeah. And I've come too far to turn around now. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. God is good. Right. Woo. I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. And at this time, we will have our morning prayer and response by Deacon Frank Daniels, followed by chant by the choir. Our eternal Father, we come this morning, dear God, with a thankful heart. Knowing, dear God, that you have blessed us and allowed us to together once again on homecoming. And for that reason, dear God, we are thankful. We are thankful, dear God, for each and every one whom you have blessed to come this way and to share in this worship experience. We ask that you may bless our visitors, our members, each and every one who have come far and near. We ask, dear God, that you may bless them throughout this service. We thank you, Lord, for our ushers, thank you, Lord. Thank our pastor, yes, our choir, yes, who have come once again to lift up your name. Yes, we ask that your spirit may flow upon them this day. Bless our pastor who have come once again to bring thy word unto us. Let him down in your deep treasure that he may be able to bring out the old and the new. Bless him this morning as he shall attempt to stand once again. And dear Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for all of your blessings and what you have done for each of us. We can only say how great thou art because we realize that you is a great God. And we just thank you, Lord, as your blessing continue to flow our way and father we know they come from you and we just thank you lord as you keep us from day to day bless us throughout this service be with us these and all other blessings we ask in the name of jesus we do pray
God say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let us say hallelujah again. Hallelujah. hallelujah. For the Lord has been good yes. to us. Yes. And the least that we can do is to praise his holy name. Oh, just praise God. Praise God. Put your hands together and praise God. If you have your Bibles with you as you remain standing, please. I invite and encourage you to open your Bibles to the New Testament, the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter, the fourth chapter. And there in the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter, beginning at verse 21, beginning at verse 21 you will find these words. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that he put off concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Verse 25, wherefore put in away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one of another. You may be seated. Thank you. Truly, we recognize the Spirit of God in this place. We recognize the Spirit of God in this place. Give an honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to our worship leader, Reverend Kim Ware, to all of the associate ministers, Reverend Payne, Reverend Lewis, Reverend Rollins, Reverend Craighead, to all of the first ladies and minister wives in the building to our deacon and trustee ministries, to the choir ministry. And I think you will join in with me and agree that they are truly singing in the spirit of God. Amen. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> to the minister, uh, ministers of music, Brother Edwards on the keyboard, Brother Harris on the drums, Brother Harris, Harris again on the guitar. God bless you. And to the choir, they are just singing in the spirit, they're singing in power. They are blessing our souls. To our ushers who are serving at the door, it was just a blessing to see about 12 or 14 ushers marching around, assisting in the offertory. God is good. And to all of the visiting deacons and the visitors who have come to worship with us today, we thank God for you. There is a word from the Lord. We're so grateful to see so many who have graced the pews this morning. God have blessed us through another 12 months. We are yet in the land of the living. 
not because we have been so good, not because we have dotted every I and crossed every T, but we are here by the grace of God. And we thank you and we thank God. From the verses of scripture I shared with you, today we want to preach from the theme, how to get rid of your old name. How to get rid of your old man. And there are some old men in the building. There are some men and women who have been married for a long number of years and sometimes we may refer to one another as old. I stopped over to let you know how to get rid of your old man. do invite you to pray with me and pray for me. I think, I think it is important for me to point out and make it clear that I am not suggesting to any of the fine ladies in the building to seek ways to get rid of your husband, your man, or your friend. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that you get rid of him, whether he is old or young bad or good. I'm not suggesting that. I said some years ago that a piece of a mane is better than no mane at all. And one of the one of the ladies of the church approached me and she said, I don't know whether I agree with you on that. And I said no, she said no because if he is just a piece of a man, I can do better without him. Uh, but even, even, even if you think, if you think you have a piece of a man, I'm not even suggesting to you to get rid of him. And I realize that some men are not as good to their wives as they should be. You talk to me and I will talk to you. And, and, and I, I realize that some wives are, are not as good to their husband as they should be. Mm -hmm. The old man that I am talking about today is much worse than a bad husband or a bad father. And to all of the men in the building, you and I, we need to get rid of the old man that we find ourselves hanging out with from time to time. The old man that I am talking about have caused deadly harm to many of thousands. Both men and women of all ages. The old man that I'm talking about introduced himself to Adam and Eve way back at the beginning of the creation 
he introduced himself. By now you may realize that I am talking about the old sinful nature. In other words, I am talking about the devil. I think you will agree that the devil is still alive and well. He's still running to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. And I realize where you are this morning. I, I realize where God have brought you from and God have saved you from. But I stopped over to remind you today. And in reminding you, I remind myself that the devil is still out to get us. Uh, every now and then he pops up in my life. And just in case you have forgotten or thinking that I've been with God so long that I don't need to worry about the devil now. May I serve notice that the devil will tap on your door and your shoulder like anyone else. And, and, and you see, I realize, I realize that you are saved. I realize that you are sanctified. I realize that you are doing all you can to do God's will. But there are times, there are times when the devil will get on our trail. He will worry us. Are you praying with me? Oh, I think you will agree that God have called us to live a holy and a sanctified life. I think you will agree that God have called us to live a righteous life. But if we try to do it on our own, we will fail yes. every time. Yes, Today we are talking about how to get rid of your old man. And, 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 and I'm not trying to pick on any of the ladies in the building, but some of you may uh, have thought of trying to get rid of your old man. I'm not talking about the devil now. I'm talking about the man in your home. Uh, you may have thought of ways to get rid of him, but uh, sometimes it's better and it's cheaper to hold on to what you got. Our text tells us in verse 22 that the old man grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. The Bible says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new man which was created according to God in righteousness and true holiness. God is saying to us that we need to get rid of the old man and put on the new man. We who are the children of God need to be reminded that the old man is still lingering around. And even though we are Christians, we are sons and daughters of God. Right. In our text, the Apostle Paul penned this letter to the church of Ephesus. He talks to them about the old man. And keep in mind, Paul was talking to church folks. He was talking to those who were saved and in the church. This old man that I'm talking about can do and have done a lot of harm. Yes, yes. This is the old man that we need to get rid of. I would like to raise the question, if you don't mind, I would just like to raise the question, and please listen carefully. How many of you have gone from last Sunday to this Sunday without committing one single sin. 
Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. But how many? How many of you have gone from last Sunday to this Sunday without committing one single sin? And as I said, please don't raise your hand. And I promise you, I promise you that I will not raise my hand because I'm mindful that we come short. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can I get a witness? Yeah. I'm mindful that in some way, shape, or form we are seen daily. And, and for those of you who have been with the Lord a long time, I want to remind you that you don't have to open your mouth to say anything. You can just sin in your mind. And we all need to watch our eyes. And if we are wearing glasses, we must be extremely careful. Amen. Amen. Christians, saved folks, you and I, we struggle. And deal with sin even though we have been born again. There are those in the world who believe they can sin all they want to. And still die and go to heaven to be with the Lord. Uh, that is dangerous thinking. We need to pray for strength and grace to come to the place or a position where we sin less and less. Can I get a witness? Because we are determined. I said we are determined. Each of you in the building this morning, we are determined to see Jesus. We are determined to make heaven our home. We want to go where Jesus is. Amen. Here in this chapter, Paul devotes one half of this passage to a non-Christian lifestyle. You see, non-Christians sin because it is their nature. That's right. I remember, I remember before God saved me, the stuff I was doing, I enjoyed doing it. And, and I never felt bad about doing it because God had not saved me. But once God had saved me and once God had saved you, when we sin, when we slip up, when we mess up, the Holy Spirit within us, it convicts us that we have done wrong. And I don't know, I don't know, like I've said, I invite you to talk back to me and I will talk to you as God gave me grace. The non-Christian sin because of their nature. They sin because they want to sin. They desire to sin. They are constantly running to sin. And I remember when I was running to sin. And I wasn't even afraid to run to it. It was just a part of my life. And I know, I know, I know that some of you are, are saved and sanctified and been with the Lord so long, you don't remember when you used to run after sin. But let me just remind you that we haven't always been in the church looking fine like we're looking this morning. Amen. God would somehow open the book on us and read the mess in my life and in your life before everybody else. I'm afraid that we would just walk out without looking back. There are those, there are those who seem to think that there is nothing wrong with sinning. Uh-huh. They're constantly running to sin. But a Christian, a child of God, may stumble. Can I get a witness? I say we may stumble. We may even fall into sin. But it's not 
are desire to sin. You do not desire to sin. And because of who you and I profess to be, we try hard not to run after sin. Is that right? And deep in, deep in our hearts, we do not want to sin willfully. Uh Uh-huh. And for the most part, we try hard to run from sin. The Holy Bible teaches us to recognize our sinful nature and to understand that the old man is always nearby. And when we when we came to Jesus, we were born again through his blood, through the blood of Jesus Christ. And on that day, Jesus wrote forgiveness uh, over every one of our sins. Is there anybody glad today uh, that Jesus have already uh, written forgiven over our sins? And I'm glad today that Jesus is still specialized in forgiving sin. Aren't you glad about it? And I'm glad today that he washed uh, away every one of my sins and every one of your sins. You ought to be glad about that. And that means the punishment or the penalty of our sin is no longer credit to our account. Uh huh. And I'm glad. I'm glad this morning uh, that the old account was settled long ago. Uh huh. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm so glad. Uh huh. That Jesus died for our sins. Uh, and I'm glad today that in spite of our shortcoming, the Lord still loves us. Uh, I'm too glad about that. Uh, And I want to point out uh, that every child of God uh, must recognize the presence of sin. Uh, That old man, uh, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, If any man be in Christ, uh, he is a new creature, and old things are I pass away and all things uh, become new. Uh, isn't God all right? Uh, and then we we must remember or uh, we must recognize uh, uh, the purpose of the old man, uh, the old nature. Uh, it is the old nature that causes us to sin. Uh, and may I remind you today uh, that we are fighting a battle uh, on three fronts. Uh, I say we are fighting a battle on three fronts. Uh, first, we uh, are fighting the world. Uh, are you praying with me? Uh, second, we are fighting the flesh. Uh, when Paul said, when I try to do good, uh, evil is always present. Uh, the things that I ought not do, uh, Paul said, I find uh, myself doing them. Uh, And the things that I should do, uh, I don't do. Uh, But I'm glad today uh, that God knows uh, all about it. Uh Uh And the third thing, uh, we are fighting the devil. Uh Mm -hmm. In my life, I've learned that sin uh, will take you further than you ever wanted to go. Uh, Can I get a witness? Uh, Somebody in the building today. uh, have gone too far and you have stayed too long but you ought to be glad today that the Lord have turned you around you ought to be glad today that the God snatched you back off the road to destruction Uh and sin will keep you longer than you ever wanted to stay and sin will cost you more than you ever wanted to pay And if the prodigal son was here today, I believe the prodigal son would tell us that I agree with the word of God. I believe the prodigal son would tell us that I left home and I went away. 
Uh -huh, but this devil, uh, the devil, uh, he kept me uh, a little too long. Uh, and I went too far. Uh, if the prodigal son uh, was here today, uh, he would tell us uh, that I spent all of my money uh, on wild living. Uh, I spent more um, uh, than I had anticipated to pay. Uh, uh -huh, and because uh, of who we profess to be, uh, we must refuse uh, to follow those desires. Uh, uh -huh, and every now and then, uh, those old desires uh, will rise up uh, in us. Uh, the old man uh, is trying to lead us uh, back into uh, that old lifestyle, uh, the old habits. Uh, he's trying to lead us back uh, to the old friends uh, that we used to hang around with. Uh, but I don't know about you, uh, but I made up uh, in my mind uh, that I'm going to hold on uh, to the hands of God. Uh, uh, and if anybody asks me, uh, where are your friends? Uh, I will tell them uh, that I have a friend uh, that sticks closer uh, than a brother. I will tell them uh, that I have a friend uh, uh, that is with me uh, both day and night. Uh, I will tell them uh, that I have a friend uh, that watches over me. Uh, I will tell them uh, that I have a friend uh, that that covers me uh, with his righteous blood. Uh, is that all right? Uh, I would tell them uh, that my friend, uh, he picks me up uh, when I'm falling down. Uh, is it God all right? Uh, what we uh, need to do uh, is to put on the garment uh, of praise uh, instead of the spirit uh, of despair. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, whether you feel like praising God or not. But when you think about the goodness of God, when you think about all God has done for you, when you look back over your life and see where God has brought you from, you ought, you ought to praise Him. You ought to praise Him and let the world know uh, that Jesus, uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus, uh, that's my soul uh, from the gate of hell. Uh-huh. Yeah, Lord. Yeah. Proverbs 23, 7. Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And we need to take on a new attitude. Have you ever seen so many church folks with bad attitudes? Uh, they will talk about the yes. goodness of God. Uh, Y'all get me here. Uh, they will talk about the goodness of God. Uh, and they will tell you on Saturday night uh, how good God been to them. Uh, where God has brought them from. Uh, but it's a shame uh, that they come to church on Sunday morning uh, with a bad attitude. Uh, I sometimes think uh, that folks who have stayed out uh, and drank all night long uh, wake up in the morning uh, with a better attitude uh, than some church folks. Uh, God want us uh, to put on a new attitude. Uh, every now and then uh, we are be able to smile. Uh, every now and then uh, we ought to look like uh, God is blessing us. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, yeah. It is important uh, to try to control uh, our thoughts. Uh, our thoughts uh, must be renewed. Uh, the Bible said, let this mind uh, be in you, uh, which is also uh, in Christ Jesus. Uh, sin uh, starts in the mind uh, and in the eyes. Uh, but I'm glad today uh, that Jesus uh, is a mind regulator. Uh, he's able, uh, I said he's able, uh, able. to sanctify our minds. Uh, God is able uh, to sanctify our hearts. Uh, God is able, able. Uh, to sanctify our souls. Uh, we ought to let the 
world know that I'm being redeemed and I'm happy with Jesus all alone. I'm glad today. I'm so glad that Jesus is a mighty good Savior. And when we were baptized in Christ, we received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And we are to allow the Spirit of God to bear fruits within us. I heard the Lord say, he said, put on a little more compassion. We must care about one another. We must care about the hurts of others and the needs of others. They are sorrows. We need to pray with them and pray for them. They are folks who are hurting today. And then the Lord wants us to put on a little more kindness. Can I get a witness? Kindness reaching out to others. God is telling us to be one to another, to love one another. And every now and then, I said every now and then, we need to show a little tenderness. Can I get a witness? The Lord, I said the Lord, the Lord is calling us to put on forgiveness. Can I get a witness? Jesus wore the garment of forgiveness. And as he hung there from the cross, his blood poured from his body. His body was weak, bruised and broken. But from the cross, he cried out, Father, oh Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And although they experienced him in his side, they had nailed him in the hand. But Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And finally, we are to put on a little more love, the Bible says. And over all these virtues, put on love. You see, love will bind us together. Can I get a witness? The Bible says, beloved, let us love one another. Love is the key because of the love of God, that the love that Jesus laid down his life because of his love. He kept on dying on the cross because of Jesus' love. He stayed there, right there on the cross. You know and I know that he kept on dying. Is there anybody in the building today who are glad that Jesus died? Aren't you glad that when we were taken deep in sin, far from the peace for sure, I'm glad today, I'm so glad. Oh Lord, I'm glad today, I'm so glad that Jesus, Jesus heard our despairing cry and he came and lifted me. Aren't you glad that the Lord lifted you? Aren't you glad that he's still lifting you? Aren't you glad that you got a friend that you can love? You got a friend that promised he will never forsake you. He will never leave you. I'm glad today. I'm so glad. Aren't you glad that Jesus is a rock in a weary land? Aren't you glad that Jesus is a shelter in the time of storm? Aren't you glad that Jesus, he's the lily of the valley? He heals, he heals, he heals, he heals my pride and morning star. He heals, he heals my bridge over troubled waters. Isn't it?
God all right? I said, is it God all right? Is it God all right? Yay! Somebody ought to say yay! 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 God is all right. God is all right. How to get rid. How to get rid of your old man. And I'm sorry if I disappointed you. And some of you may have been thinking uh, along some other lines there, but I may have disappointed you, but this is the man that we need to get rid of. The devil. That old sinful nature. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. The choir shall make preparation to sing. At this time, the appeal to discipleship will be made. As the choir say, how to get rid of your the ministers will take their places. ministers are in place the spirit of God is in this place I said the spirit of God is in this place the spirit of God is moving I stand to extend unto you the greatest and the most important invitation that will ever be extended to you and that is the invitation to come to Jesus Christ just as you are. If there is just one in our midst, if there is just one in our midst that never been saved, never confessed your sins, never repented of your wrongdoing, this is your opportunity where you stand and the ministers are there to assist you in making your way to the front. Is there one today that never been saved, never been baptized, never put on Christ Jesus, never prayed the sinner's prayer? If you are here, will you stand? Will you stand and make your way to the front? Is there one? Is there one seeking membership of this church family by letter, by Christian experience? Maybe no under watch here. If you are here today, will you come? Will you come? He took my broken Maybe someone has strayed away from the Lord. You're strayed away from the church. He gave me a you are here today. You just want to come back and restore your fellowship with Jesus Christ and the church oh, family. This is your opportunity. Will you come? Jesus. Is there one? No. God bless you, ministers. Thank you. He took my broken pieces. He took my broken pieces. He gave me a brand new start. Gave me a sing, choir. Sing, sing, sing. Have sing you song. ever wondered where my God?